Hi there folks, welcome to another Train Simulator video. Today we're going to take a look at the recently released uh, Sierra Number no. 3 or 10 wheeler uh, from the guys at Machine Rail, uh, which are some third party devs for Train Simulator and have made quite a few uh, very nice uh, steam engines, not only for uh, international railways as in Brazil because that is where they're from, but some very nice American railroads and locomotives as well. Uh, now, this thing has got a ton of cool history behind it. Uh, it was in pretty much if you've ever seen any movie or TV show with a steam engine in it, this is what you saw. Uh, this was in movies such as, I mean, it was probably over 100 movies and TV shows, but this was in Pale Rider. Uh, Unforgiven and Back to the Future 3, of course, tweaked a little bit for that last scene of it, uh, you know, getting up to 88 miles an hour, pushing the uh, that sweet, sweet DeLorean. Anyway, this is a, a movie engine, essentially, but it's a real steam engine, don't get me wrong. Um, essentially, what it is, is the pack that you're going to get is called the 1891 Roger Sierra 460. It's a $15 bundle. And it's all the number three, so you're going to get four liveries. Uh, there's a dirty, clean, striped, and Sierra Railway, which is what we're looking at here first and foremost. It is, of course, standard gauge. Uh, and it's got 2K and 4K textures, so it's, it's fairly heavy, but not too heavy. I, I haven't had really any problems messing around with it today unless I place all four of them in the same instance, and then I lose a little frame, so it's a little heavy in that regard. Um, but the number three was essentially owned by the state of California and preserved at Railtown 1897 in Jamestown, California. It was built by Rogers Loco Works, I think in Patterson, New Jersey. Uh, on March 26, 1891, it is a 4.60 10-wheeler. It's got about 17,470 uh, pounds of tractive force. And it was operated by Prescott and Arizona Central Railway. And then they essentially bankrupt. And a couple of guys, or at least one guy from that railway, and a couple other railroad dudes kind of got together and created the Sierra Railway before what it is today the the modern sierra railway is a bit different than what it was but um anyway it was operated by sierra railroad uh up until about 1932 of course almost scrapped made it through the years uh it was saved by many historians one of which clint eastwood uh kind of wrote a thing to the state of California or something like that and in, in, in hopes to try and get it preserved uh, and all this other good stuff but it's uh, it's got a lot of great history behind it I advise you to go and and do some googling and, and watch some stuff on this there's a lot of great YouTube videos of this thing in real life running um, but anyway Sierra was incorporated in 1897 essentially acquiring the number three primarily for freight uh, having a role in things like logging mining dam building extending the rail line itself it was originally burning coal obviously like a lot of old steam engines and it was converted uh to oil for modernity but uh anyway we're gonna go ahead and take a look at this thing it looks very very nice as with a lot of the machine rail stuff the modeling is downright impeccable there's their little plate there Got your Rogers stamp right there. Patterson, New Jersey. Number 4493. And just look at the uh, the texturing on this bit on the front as well. That looks very nice. Kind of scratches and striations. That looks very good. I mean, this thing has got all the bells and whistles. If, if you're a rivet counter, this thing is for you. Uh, even this wood, the painted wood here, it's got kind of that texture. It looks like it was painted. That looks very, very nice as well. The thing is gorgeous. It's a unique and extremely historical and uh, popular engine. So it's neat to have it in Train Simulator. Apparently what the guys at Machine Rail are going to do is make this in three packs. This is the first pack. The second pack, I'm not sure what it's going to be. And then there's going to be a movie pack, if I'm not mistaken. That's going to have all... 
essentially liveries and skins of how this thing looked in certain movies and TV shows. That'll be interesting. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what that's all about. But, um, of course, we got the tender here. Looks very nice. I mean, the modeling, it's its pretty much what you've come to expect from machine rail. It looks very nice. And this wooden box right here and the hinges, that looks amazing. Man, even the top of this thing, and this is just one of them. They all basically look different. This has got the, uh, what is this, the Congdon stack? There were several stacks. They all kind of look the same. I don't know them all by the uh, back of my hand. This thing is gorgeous, though. Very, very gorgeous. Uh, what else you're going to get is, I feel like something that's been lacking in a lot of their uh, add-ons is you're going to get a nice uh, kind of technical overview. So let me bring this down. So you're actually going to get a manual of sorts. Uh, in the past, I don't think they've really included these. So it's it's got some history about the thing, which is very nice. Uh, you've got your, your four variations there if you will um, talking about performance limitations and things like that because it is 2k and 4k textures but you know most people have a, a modern enough machine that it should have no problem running this mine's definitely not you know upper tier and I'm not really having any issues at all talks all about the uh, you know what you might call it dimensions technical datas all that sort of stuff there. And it's got the key binds. So I'm going to have this open to take a look at that, which is nice because uh, in, in the past, previously, I don't think key binds were included. Of course, references for in cab, uh, inactive, interactive controls. That's cool. And there's the liveries, which we'll take a look at too, of course. And I believe they still had. Um, yeah, developed with support from Caledonia Works. So this is it right here. Now, if you switch this to U.S. doll hairs, it's basically 15 bucks, which, honestly, that ain't bad at all. That's, that's $5 shy of the norm, uh, what you pay on Steam for stuff that's most of the time average or below average. So this is very nice. One of the things you will need to notate is when you purchase this item, you're going to receive one file. For whatever reason, they explain uh, in detail on another page. They cannot host more than one gigabyte, so what you'll need to do is download this additional texture file as well. They're both RWP files. You slap them in, you're good to go. That is literally all you got to do. Go ahead and get these out of here. All right, let me get my manual popped up here. All right, so we've got the headlights, which I think they've changed the headlight a little bit. Um, the flare, I still love the flare and the coloring on this thing. It looks amazing. Uh, it's not too crazy. It doesn't pop off of the light far at all. Some some lights and flares, even some really nice ones, seem to kind of pop off the actual light some. These don't seem to do that, but it does look like they've changed it a bit. But it looks really, really clean. So, of course, that's H. And then if you hit H one more time, that goes to the tender, which is back here. And then Shift H back to the front, Shift H again, and then off. Of course, you've got your bell. And it's animated too, of course. Very nice sounding bell. Five chime whistle. Space bar. Now that sounds really damn good. That is a nice, nice, nice whistle. It's got a little bit of clipping or, or whatever it is at the end, but it's it's hardly noticeable. It's I don't know. I. I really tend to listen to things like this very deeply. 
uh, you know, because reasons. I don't, I don't even know why, really. But uh, I can, I can notice it. But it's not very noticeable at all. It still sounds fantastic. It's got a nice beginning. It's got a nice end. And of course, that bit's animated as well. The uh, little pull there. I mean, look at this stuff. That is hot. All the weathering on these little brass fittings and whatnot. That is gorgeous. Bits are kind of blackening in there from, you know, time and soot and smoke and all kinds of stuff. That looks really good. But it's got a nice sound as well. Of course, you've got the, uh, I don't know if I can say this on YouTube. We'll call it the, uh, cylinder opener apparatus which is uh, C <laughs> now it doesn't tend to make any noise uh, until you start a bit of motion so we'll do that now And that does have a bit of clipping in the sound, uh, a, re a recyclative sound, uh, if you will. It's it's fairly brief. That is a bit, a lot more noticeable, should I say, over the horn, but it's still not terrible. But I love the sound at the end, shutting that valve off. That sounds really good. That quick... That sounds impeccable. Of course, you got the sander as well, which is, uh, I think it's X. Let's see if we've actually got any animation. Hmm. Are we going backwards? Yes, we are. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not seeing it. All right, anywho, let's check out those brake shoes. Those, of course, are animated. They clamp down. You can see the wheels slide a little bit and the piston pop out as well. Now, one thing I did notice about these wheels, I don't know if these were kind of done the same fashion in the past, but it doesn't look like the actual wheel itself turns. It kind of just looks like this bit in the middle here turns. So we'll check that out again. We can get her moving here. There we go. Yeah, so I don't I don't know if I've just not noticed that before, but the actual wheel, the bit on the outside, the flange, the rim isn't turning. So that's interesting. You know, again, it's not... When, when you look at a lot of stuff like this in depth, or at least try to, you just tend to notice things like that. It's not the end of the world. It doesn't make it literally unplayable or anything like that. It's just stuff that I notice. But, I mean, overall, the, the freaking model on this thing is gorgeous. The Sierra Railway lettering and font looks great. The coloring looks great. Extremely sharp number as well it's got that shadow behind it it looks awesome the shape of the tank on these things were extremely unique as well this is just a nice 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 looking engine cow catcher in the front plate looks nice as well it just looks great everywhere so let's go ahead and hop inside the cab all right so this is nice. Got the green wood seats. Look at the fabric on the seats. Those look really nice as well. Of course, they wouldn't have had that back in the old days before the turn of the century. But that looks really nice. Really clean texturing and modeling. Let's see, what's this up here? 
So that's the headlight switches. Got a nice sound as well. Gauge light switch. And cab light switch. Now, I'm not seeing any difference in performance right now. It's staying locked at a 60 FPS. So that's good. I did not realize this thing had gauge lights. So that's interesting. Did I turn them off or on? Huh. I guess I guess it's this gauge. I'm not sure. Let's do the cab light one more time. Look at the bulb there. There it is. It's a nice color as well. You can actually kind of see through the bulb a little bit, the base of the bulb there into the socket, which is nice. Uh, whatever this switch is, this toggle is not animated or used. I don't know what that is. Ah, you can slide down these rear windows. Nice. Okay. Very nice. Just checking out the different views here. Can of course move these windows as well. Looks like just the the ones near the uh, seating position here. Got a nice sound as well, the click and the the bang at the end. Listen to that. That is a nice sound as well. Very nice. You can see all the goodies out front as you're going down the track. See what we can mess with over here. The interior looks really damn good in here, I must say. Here's the steam injector. God, even the hose. Look at this. That hose looks amazing. You can see the 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 bit inside the the fabric or the rubber or whatever that is where it's uh it's like a mesh you know like a steel mesh in there that looks awesome i'm trying to get a better look at these gauges those look very very nice as well let's do our uh whistle pull in here Get all that animation. Nice. Bell. That is gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. This thing is super, super intricate. I feel like I'm going to break something just looking at it. Uh... I generally run Steam and Train Sim like a plebeian with the auto fireman on, so yeah. <laughs> I believe you can open this hatch as well. Roof hatch, nice. See it externally too? It looks great. Let's see, I'm just referencing the uh, the manual over here off screen. I think we covered most everything you can open the smoke box door and sand dome cap as well with q of course you wouldn't do that while these things were fired that would be a a, a big problem so that's cool you can actually see that slid off in the sand texture down in there that looks really nice bt dubs look at the smoke box as well look at that it's still a cool feature is it necessary no is it cool? Yes. I still like it. Uh, there you go. Just pop Q again to close it. All right, so we'll back on to this awaiting consist behind us and just pull it down the line a little tiny bit, and then we'll check out each other variation of the locomotive and see what's what. Because I'm assuming there are differences. I mean, when they changed from coal to, uh, to oil fire... You know, there would there would be some differences, I'd assume. Yeah, 
There we go, getting our seating position. Alright, we'll give her a little bit of J-Bar. Man, I, I really don't even think I have to say anything. The modeling on this is another level. Get the fire down in there, nice. Jeez, even this steel, look at that. The kind of stressing in the steel. That is gorgeous. All right, let's go. Okay, that's nice. See the gauges up there working appropriately. controller that's annoying all right physically it does not feel overpowered at all this thing feels pretty nice I don't have a, a very heavy train behind us but uh, these things didn't pull massive consists back in the day just a string of cars that's about it it feels pretty good I'm fairly low on the J bar about 40% right now at about 40% throttle it up a bit more hear the sound changing, the higher speed rotation. I'm going to drop the J-bar down to about 30%. So right in here, there's like a loud bassy clunking. I have no clue what that is. 60% throttle. Definitely hear the uh, the sound change. Seventy. Eighty. That sounds pretty good. I can hardly hear anything. I can't hear myself think, but that's, you know, that's fine. All right, we'll do some external sounds here. Try and get a decent view of the, the thing here. All right, we'll cut it down. There's 80. 70. 60. Fifty. Forty. Thirty. Just gonna cut it out altogether. 
should just hear clanking rods and all that stuff. Put on the brakes. Does the piston pop out. It looks like the piston just kind of goes from open to close. There's no kind of in between. The braking seems fairly legit. It doesn't slow down too fast or too slow. Damn bushes. Nice little squeak at the end there. Sounds all right. All right, so we'll do an exterior run now for the sounds. Gonna leave the J bar at about 35%. Start with 10% throttle. She's rocking. Must be windy. It's 15%. This thing rocking like a son of a gun. What? is going on <laughs> if the steam engine's rocking don't come a knocking all right 20 percent 27 come on mama There's 40. I'm trying to leave the J-Bar low to, to really get a feel of the grunt of this thing. Sure, I could pop it up some, but... I want to hear the sounds, the, the slow building of it all. It's 45% throttle. I think still rocking like crazy, man. <laughs> Train sim. Gotta love it. 50%. It's got a nice chuff. I like it to chuff. Sixty fight. Seventy. That sounds really good. It's got some depth to it. There's that transition in the sound. Look at these things working independent. Oh my god. Steam engines, man. Look at that. That is impeccable. Wow, wow, wow. And kill it. All right, so the chuff sounds pretty good. I mean, that's... I feel like that's one of the areas that Machine Rail's been lacking a little bit, even though their their latest products have been really, really nice. It's the chuff sound and the... Ah, the, the angry steam engine noises weren't really there. This sounds totally different. This is really, really nice. 
Anyway, we're going to let this sucker go, and we're going to go and check out the other three variants. Alright, so this is the black clean variant. So I would imagine this would be uh, maybe the as-delivered look about it. It's got a different stack, as you can tell. Uh, there's, of course, let me go ahead and click on it. That'd probably be a great idea. There we go. Get the headlight on. It's It's got some different coloring and things of that nature. Little, little bits of pinstriping and all that good stuff, which... You know, I would imagine would be the case. Um, it looks nice again, though. It's it's got some nice texturing. The paint looks very nice. It's there's a, a tiny bit of shine and some muted bits on there that just look pretty darn natural. The tender. See what's going on inside here. Hmm. So this one, uh, if I'm not mistaken, and I'm no uh, knowledgeable, you know, super knowledgeable person over steam engines, but this one's still appears to be oil fired. I don't think they're all oil fired. I very well may be wrong though. Uh but in the I'm looking in the manual. Um maybe they are all oil fired. I guess they were all uh switched to oil uh, around the turn of the century. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. So the interior of this one looks about the same. The seat covers look about the same. Uh, it's all going to have the same sounds. Same little uh, bells and whistles. Ha <laughs> ha Pun. Um, you know, as far as like the doors and windows and all that good stuff opening. So this is the black clean variant. Alright, next up, black dirty variant. All right, this is the black dirty variant, and look at this son of a gun. This thing has been working hard. That looks really, really nice. I mean, super dirty. Got the straight stack as well of the top hat stack. You can even see the cap hanging off the back of it there. That's cool. The wheels, even the wheels and the rods and everything are dirty as well. All the cylinders are dirty. Uh, they don't have that white stripe like the one we just looked at, the clean variant. Even the logo on the back, look at that. That is detail. Like somebody poured some Coca-Cola in a Windex squirt bottle. I just went to town. I love it. It looks awesome. Uh, once again, I don't think much else is going to be different about this variant. Except the, uh, of course, the exterior look of it for the most part. The interior seems to be the same as far as I can tell. So yeah, that is the weathered variant or the dirty not even weather just straight dirty all right next up is the stripey boy all right this is the fourth and last but certainly not least uh variant this is the striped variant so as you can see it's obviously got the white stripe along the uh, kind of foot plate there and it's weathered very nicely as well i, I you know i'd say it's not as sharp texture wise as some of the other stuff but it still looks pretty nice the wheels are striped as well the tender is striped I mean look at the wood that looks great man that looks great it's got the stripe around the tender as well the box the letters look phenomenal impeccable gorgeous 
Very, very nice. And again, it's got the uh, the top hat stack. I don't think much else has changed again, so I guess only the, the modern day version of number three has got the Congdon style, or whatever it's called, Congdon-esque. Uh, the interior looks pretty same, same too, as far as I can tell. The coloring's still green. Um, yeah, I guess they were all oil fired. I, I thought, sure as heck, uh, the early ones, or the original was, uh, coal. But I guess these are all Earl. Earl fired. But that's it, guys. That is, uh, that is all four of the, uh, the 460 or the 10-wheeler Sierra number no. three. Uh, built by Rogers Locomotive Works, now available on Machine Rail. I will link it down below if you want to go and pick this thing up for yourself. It is a very, very nice steam engine. I would also like to add the route that we have been on in this entire video is by a very, very talented route creator named Zaval. And this is the Wild West route. It is a fictional, semi-fictional route, but god dang if it isn't just absolutely gorgeous it doesn't require a lot of assets either to get it working uh and he's got a lot of them he's got standard gauge narrow gauge different time periods he's got like four or five of these routes it's insane uh the guy has an eye for route building but uh this is the route that i've been using so i will link that as well below uh because you know we've, we've only got so many steam engined era routes in ts so it's it's nice to have something to run these old suckers on but uh, that's it, guys. Thanks for watching, and uh, I'll catch you on the next one. Take care out there.